Hi everyone, this is my demo for how to set up the still life and how to set up your um, painting environment at home so that you have a little easier time with success. So I've collected a bunch of household objects right here. Um, one thing that I have is this is actually just a Tupperware and this Tupperware I'll probably actually use the square one because it's a little flatter and not so high. And I'm just gonna put that underneath my drapery to help me be able to put one of the objects up higher so I have different levels. Um, I have, this is a shot glass that was a gift. It was one of those takeaway gifts at a wedding. I'm not going to use the side that has the printing, so I'll use the plain side of it. Um, I've got a little brown medicine bottle. Um, you could also just go to the dollar store. I remember I said in the instructions, that I really like you to have something that has some transparency or a strong reflection to it, like metal. The transparency is actually easier than the reflection. Um, unless you pick certain types of items. So I would suggest just going to the dollar store and getting like a little colored bottle of some sort. You can use it in your bathroom later for looks. Um, I've got an apple. If you're gonna use real fruits or vegetables, they've gotta be something that'll be good for like a month. So the idea with the apple is that I can put this in the fridge when I'm not working on the still life and then just go get it out of the fridge and I'll mark where it goes in my still life. I found a little ping pong ball, that'll be good as well. Um, the squash is another idea, although really I'm, I'd rather have a couple things that have some color to them. Um, I've got a pillowcase. I didn't have any white pillowcases, so I took a patterned one and I turned it inside out because usually the patterns are printed on one side. So the inside a lot of times is white, um, unless it's printed like on a black fabric or something. You don't have to do white drapery, but I would suggest with your drapery that it's something light colored because you'll get better reflected light on your objects if you do. I've got a utility knife because I need to be able to cut whichever box I choose. I have two boxes here. I have a smaller box and my objects are so small, I'm probably gonna use the small box. Um, and then I've got a big one. I wasn't sure when I picked these up at Costco. I was like, well, one of these will work. And then I've got a roll of duct tape and that's gonna be used for kind of anchoring some of the items so that they don't move around or for placing a little um, tick where I wanna be able to put something back if I do need to move it. Um, so basically I'm good to go with setting up the still life. So I think since my objects are small, I'm going to use my smaller box. So I'm going to get this out of the way. And what you want to do with your small, with your box, with whatever box you choose, is you're going to want to decide like what angle you think you want to use it. And then you're going to want to cut off two sides of it. And that's so that it helps the light come in. Um, I guess you don't even have to cut off the sides if you don't want or you could cut them off part way. Um, that's fine as well. So let's cut off this side of it because I think I'm gonna use this more vertically. And the box really could become part of the composition that you're painting, depending on how you set this up and whether you're moving it and stuff like that. Hopefully you've got some place to set up at home where you can kind of leave things set up and um, and not have to move them all the time. But the nice thing with doing a still life like this is that if you do need to move it, it's possible. You just wanna be very careful. Um, my suggestion would be to uh, take some photos of it. I'd really prefer you work from the still life and not from the photos, but take the photos so that you see where everything was at. Um, at school, I don't allow you to work from photos on this project, so my recommendation will be if you can not, just take photos to ch once you get it all set up so you know where things are gonna be. And, um, and then not, try not to use those photos for your painting. Um, if you can, it's pretty obvious who does and who doesn't once I see the painting, so. Um, but whatever the case, there's only so much control I can have over this. If you were in my classroom, I definitely would want you just working from the still life. Working from the still life and not photos is actually much harder and it's much better training for your eyes as far as being a painter. I know it's a lot harder, that's why we do it. So, um, so this is gonna be my drapery that I, that I basically sacrificed to this project for a little while and it'll come back out later. Um, and I wouldn't tape anything down yet. I just would kind of decide where I want things. You don't have to cover every inch of your box, um, but it's nice to cover a good portion of it. I know drapery is hard also. Um, what I would say is, I, the, the reason I suggested like something 
like a towel or a pillowcase. Towels tend to be a little heavy, and so they're actually hard to set up in this unless it's a really old, worn out towel, or maybe something that's not terry, like a dish towel. But um, this works really well. This is just a flannel pillow, which I don't wanna use in the summertime anyways, so that works out well. When you set it up, think about like some of the folds. Make sure you've got some folds in there, but don't go crazy with like really twisty, wrinkly knots. If you've got a piece of drapery that's really wrinkled, get the wrinkles out. Iron it or throw it in the dryer, whatever you need to do, because those wrinkles all become part of what you're worrying about when you're painting. I like this little like twist right here. I'm gonna actually keep that in there. Um, what I was thinking I would do when I started looking at all my objects is I'll probably set the apple up here. And then I'm thinking um, this bottle, maybe down here somewhere. And it won't look like much until you start putting a light on it. And I know I said three objects. I'm okay if you go a little bit more. Just don't make it so crazy that it's impossible for you to paint. I don't want this made in China tag on here. So I either need to ignore it while I paint it or just kind of scrape it off a little bit. Scraping it off is going to make a little bit more of a mess right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of both. I'm going to ignore it, but I want to get rid of some of this so that I get a little bit better read on the reflection and and the type on here isn't distracting for me. So I'm just using my knife to kind of get the rest of that tag off of there as much as I can. And I am not gonna paint all the little baubles from this tag on there, okay? So this, uh, I think I'll set this over here and probably put like this little ball nearby because um, once I set up a light, I might get some interaction with that. And then, I can figure out if I'm happy with the light so, and where I might want the light to be. And you've got to remember when you've got your clamp light, you've got to be able to like realistically have some place you can clamp it. So it might just be on a chair. Like really that's what I do a lot of times. Um, you could like clamp it on your box if you have a strong box. Just keep in mind that sometimes the boxes are a little bit not so strong and that you could run into some problems with that. The nice thing with that overhead light is that you might get some nice shadows, but personally, I kind of prefer like a three quarter light. So more than likely when I set this up, I'm gonna set it up kind of from an angle like this, where I get, I hope you can see that okay, but where I get like some nice shadows on one side of my objects, um, but that I have other sides that are lit up. It gives me nice deep shadows and some of my pockets of drapery and so on. And, and that's pretty much it for it. Um, you don't need to worry about setting up the light at this moment because the first thing you're gonna wanna do is actually mark and set up all your places for your objects. And that's why I got this ready. So um, I'm gonna put a couple pieces of tape on the back of my box here just to steady the drapery so it doesn't like get pulled around too much if I move it. And that's probably plenty right here to just kind of keep it from moving a lot. You could even put them right up here at the back. Um, you could stick them like right behind the drapery if you want to kind of tape it, like just roll one up. Um, this is just duct tape. It should stick okay. Um, obviously a lot of pressure it's going to come off, but for the most part it should be all right. So you could kind of put that in there and then soften that drapery fold a little bit. Depending on what angle I paint, that duct tape's going to show. Let me rip a couple more pieces of this because I definitely am going to want to anchor a little bit at the bottom on the drapery as well. The other thing you can do um, if you have like spray starch is you can actually pull your objects out and just spray this thing down really good with spray starch. Let it dry out and then after it's dry, you can put the objects in while it's drying just to help make sure that they, may, that they have an indentation into the drapery that their weight is kind of accounted for on the drapery. But um, once it dries, that drapery will actually stay pretty well like set where it needs to be, which is nice. So um, the other thing I, I would like to do, so I need to kind of remember this basic setup. It might move a little bit when I put things back, that's okay. But the other thing that I really like to do is if I've got a box or something under there, I'm gonna lift up this drapery and just put a couple pieces of tape so that that box doesn't shift too much, okay? And then when I put this back down, I can put a couple things of these rolled tapes in and that'll help with um, keeping the drapery 
actually want it back a little bit again. So keeping the drapery in place so it doesn't move too much. I've got a pretty big fold over here that could get disturbed pretty easy. So I'm gonna pull this back and anchor this down a little bit and that'll help. And then this covers it, the fold covers all that tape I just put there. Now, we know that we're gonna need to put the apple in and out. That's probably not too hard to remember where it's at because of my setup. But if you had the apple like out here somewhere, let's say we were gonna put it right here in the middle of this, I probably am gonna wanna put like just a little marker of tape where that apple goes. And then I'm gonna want to note on the apple like which direction, like you can see that this um, stem is basically pointed back here. So I can actually put another marker for that as well. So I'm gonna put this marker here, the apple goes there, and then I'm just gonna kind of look at this, and really I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a colored pencil, and I'm gonna mark it a little bit on here. It's the inside of my pillowcase, it should wash out, but if it doesn't, it's not a big deal. I'm actually gonna mark it back here, and I'm just not gonna paint it. So this gives me a direction, this little mark gives me a direction for where the, the stem is going that will help me hopefully remember and then take pictures. The pictures will really help as well. This bottle can go up here. If you're going to possibly be moving and you don't wanna take the bottle in and out, you can always put just a tiny roll of sticky tape under this too. Um, let's say we put this right here and it's on a little bit of this rise, and I kind of like to have things level. It bothers me when they're sitting unlevel because then it looks like my painting's weird if I paint it correctly. Now I'm just gonna have this ball out here. And I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and mark because the ball is so light. I'm gonna place a little marker right here just so I know where to put the ball back if for some reason it rolls off. And that's basically it. Your still life is done. Um, when you're painting, you'll want to have some place, hopefully, that you don't have to move it around a lot because the more you move it, the more likely things are going to end up differently. If you're able to leave it somewhere, another thing that helps is whenever you're sitting to paint is to mark where your chair is at, like your chair legs or whatever it is. Like Get comfortable, start painting, start doing your drawing, and then before you get up to do things, just put some tape on the ground or wherever it helps you out so that you know like where you were sitting the last time. Um, we can't do that so much in the classroom because there's so many people we'd all lose track of our tape and it, it becomes a big mess But at home you can certainly do that and it'll help you keep it straight and Voila, you got a still life and then um, I usually set up a chair I bring a chair over nearby like when I'm at home and then a lot of times That's what I do is I clamp that light onto the chair So if I'm clamping the light onto the chair, especially if it's a chair that I might be using for something else. I might also put a piece of tape on the chair where that chair was sitting in relationship to my still life. Like, I actually really like that because I like kind of dramatic lights and shadows. Um, when you set up and decide where you're wanting, you probably don't want to be looking into the light bulb. So I would probably move just a little bit here to the side so it's not so much in my face. Um, but now we've got a really nice still life set up and, and we can work on that for our painting. Thank you.